No act man, nothing has happened to Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is actually just fine. And hang on, before you start hating on me and busting my nuts, I like act man. I think what happened with him with Tickled Man TV, or Quantum Douchebag as I call him, I thought it was all bullshit. I love Act Man. I love his videos. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the guy, to be quite honest. I think the content he puts out is great. However, I think some of the things that he talked about in his What Happened to Yu-Gi-Oh! video is just incorrect. And I think, in his defense, it was a 40-minute video. I mean, it could probably be a two-hour video, honestly, with everything that's gone on Yu-Gi-Oh! So I want to touch on some things that I think he could have expanded on more and kind of explain some things that he talked about. So let's diggity dab on into it, shall we? We're also about 11 subscribers away from 1,000. the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that subscribe button because guess what we're only 11 subscribers away at the time he's making this video from our goal of 1,000 subscribers I'm so excited I'm so fucking excited I'm thinking in like a couple days we're gonna get there we're gonna have a live stream there's gonna be confetti balloons I'm gonna get drunk as fuck probably I don't know I doubt that that'll probably happen I'm joking but smash it so that you can be part of the Avery army so that we can get there boys and girls all jokes aside I really do appreciate all of the support so the act man in case you haven't heard of him, he's only got like over a million fucking subscribers on YouTube. Really awesome YouTuber, has made so many great videos. Had a lot of bullshit happen with him with Quantum TV that wasn't his fault. It's a whole lot of drama. Um, but just to make it clear, I'm not hating on the guy. I'm just giving, cr not critical feedback, but I'm just, I'm giving constructive feedback. That's the word I'm looking for. On his video that he made of talking about what has happened to Yu-Gi-Oh since he last played. Now, for those of you who don't know, well, Ackman made a video about Yu-Gi-Oh. He's a fan of Yu-Gi-Oh. I saw him do a video with DZ for like a couple years ago talking about Yu-Gi-Oh and things like that. And essentially what this 40-minute video boiled down to, nearly 40 minutes long, is that he talked about how Yu-Gi-Oh has changed over 20 plus years of power creep and the game's gotten faster and out of control and of course he did what every other person does that hasn't played Yu-Gi-Oh in fucking years and he shows off Nirvana High Paladin and he's like this card's a synchro and it's a pendulum and it's got all this text of words and then I will give him credit though he didn't just show off that one he also showed off Endemion the Mighty Master of Magic and out of all the points that he made in his video I was thinking about reacting to it and then breaking it down, but rather I just want to have a broad general discussion about the video and talk about points that I just really didn't agree with. Um, as someone, for those of you who are new to the channel, I've been playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh for over 10 years. Went to my first local card shop in 2008 and I started playing competitively from there. So I've seen the game evolve for all these years. And, you know, I get it. I get why a lot of people think that the game has just gone crazy. You know, you think of pendulum summoning before they fixed pendulum summoning where, you know, you had your pendulum scales and if you have two set up, then you couldn't possibly special summon up to five monsters at once. You know, look at my Master Duel is Terrible video where I said Yu-Gi-Oh! has fallen so far so fast, Master Duel is terrible. A lot of the comments I get on there is, someone beat me in two turns, they summoned like 10 times in turn, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, welcome to modern Yu-Gi-Oh! because that's what Yu-Gi-Oh! has become. Now, when he shows off Endemion, the Mighty Master of Magic, he showed, like, its pendulum effect. It's got the most text of any card in the game, which is true. But I want to break down what this card does when you take the time to learn the game and understand what the card does at face value. We're not going to talk about the pendulum effect because that's a whole new different can of worms. Just its monster effect. Let's boil it down past all of the problem-solving card text, or PSCT as we call it in the community. So when a spell or trap card or the effect of a spell or trap card is activated, you get to return a card you control that has a spell counter, say Break of the Magical Warrior, for example, because when it's normal summoned, it gains a spell counter. You return it to the hand, negate the activation, and then destroy the card. Then you can place the number of spell counters on Endemion that the return card that you sent back had, and then it just gains the counter right? Then while he has that, any spell counters on him, then your opponent cannot target him with card effects. So you can't use something like Ring of Destruction to target and destroy it. And it also can't be destroyed by card effects. So you, now you can't use Dark Hole on me. Um, and then if he's destroyed by battle, meaning you use like a Blue Eyes White Dragon to attack over it, 
then I can add any normal spell from my deck to my hand. Remember, a normal spell is something like Dark Hole. It doesn't have that little symbol there. That's what it does. That's a lot of effects in the card, but when you break it down, it essentially boils down to roughly three effects. Now, I get it from Ackman's point of view. It, the, the cards are insane. You know, if you're someone coming into the game that you haven't played for like over 20 years, and now you're hearing the term hand trap, and you're seeing things like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. You're seeing an actual hand trap trap card like Infinite Impermanence, a trap card that you can activate from your hand during either player's turn. Your, your, your mind's going to explode. And I get that. But like my comment says on Ackman's video, if you take the time to learn the game, you realize that when you kind of break it down, it's not as confusing as one might think. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some things that confuse me in the game to this day. I don't claim to be an, ex an absolute 100% expert. You know, I'm not going to be a four-time YCS winning champion like Chris LeBlanc just did in YCS Minneapolis, which a YCS is basically just a big championship tournament. At the same time, Ackman says, what has happened to Yu-Gi-Oh? But I would argue that Yu-Gi-Oh is doing great. Because if a card game hasn't evolved, how is it going to be around for 20 years? This last big championship event that we had, known as a YCS, that just happened in Minneapolis, had over 1,000 players. That should speak for itself how great the game is growing. Now, he did talk about things like power creep. And yes, I think a lot of people in the community will tell people that if you were to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, it'd be a really bad time. Because power creep has become, as uh, I believe his name is Zuzu from Head to Head Battle said, it's gone from year over year, as power creep normally happens, from set to set. You know, we have one core booster set that has 100 cards in it, we get power creep. Another 100 card booster set comes out, we get even more power creep. And it gets more and more and more out of control to now where we are coming into a tier zero format, meaning one deck is the best deck out of everything else. And it can mill potentially 10 cards out of your deck on its first turn between Aigido the Ancient Sentinel and Kelbeck the Ancient Vanguard. Look those cards up if you want to do your own little research. I get that that really throws a lot of people off. It threw a lot of people off when they went to Master Duel. Master Shits, excuse me, I can't believe that just came out of my mouth, but I'm trying to make a point here. And on top of that too, the last thing I kind of want to end off on here uh, before I kind of go on a rambling tangent, Actman, you interviewed people in the Yu-Gi-Oh community, which I appreciate, but some of the people that you interviewed either make just, I can't believe I'm saying it again, master duel videos like DZ, or they're not really competitive players anymore, or who just like to bitch about the game, like Slaydra, aka Asian Eyes White Dragon. For years, Slaydra has bitched and complained about the fucking game, and like he thinks a card like Saryuja Skull Dread should be fucking banned. And it's like, Saryuja isn't even played in any competitive decks right now. And to put that into perspective for you who may be coming from this video from Ackman's, Saryuja Skuldred is a link monster that if you use four monsters to summon it, it allows you to draw four cards and put three cards from your hand on the bottom of your deck in any order. That should tell you that that card not being played in any competitive decks right now, that should tell you like just how crazy the game is or even can be. Some decks play it, but they're not they're not top in events. They're not doing well. Slaydra, like he shows off these really gimmicky decks. He shows off builds that are really inconsistent. Like he wants to be competitive with things like Malefics and Malefics are fucking garbage. Like they're booty booty butt cheeks as we say on the channel. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with playing a deck like that. But the point is, is that if you're going to interview people in the competitive scene, you want to interview people who actually competitively play the game. Like Farfa plays competitively as far as I know. DZ seems to, but he's posting a lot of master shit videos. Asian Eyes doesn't play fucking competitively. Team APS used to play competitively. Now he says the game is too expensive and I've gotten my deck stolen like two or three fucking times. So I'm not going to play competitively. If you wanted to really get a feel for what the competitive landscape is like, you should have interviewed smaller channels. And I'm not trying to like shoehorn myself in here, but I'm just trying to give an example. You want to interview smaller channels that do play competitively, whether it's Team Bortles, myself, um, Zephyr Wargames Yu-Gi-Oh!, Cali Effect, you want a big channel. 
Interview someone like Cali Effect. Interview someone like Pac. Interview someone like Joshua Schmidt, who actually plays the game competitively and can give you a good idea of what the game is like. Don't interview these big Yugi tubers, as we call them in the community. Don't interview them just because that they have a big subscriber count because they may not know what the fuck they're talking about. I can tell you right now that Sladra doesn't. In my humble opinion, I do not feel like Sladra is a good player. I don't feel that he's a competitive player. That's not me hating on the guy, but when you're trying to show off decks that you say are good or you're showing off replays saying, oh, this deck's insane, when it's a once in every 100 games glass cannon... How can you really say that that's competitive? Yaxine 656 is competitive. He'll show you shit that's coming out in like six months here to say, hey, prepare your butthole because this is what our format's going to be like in six months. Again, I'm not trying to hate on Ackman's video. I thought it was very well put together. I just think that he really scratched the surface on only one side of the coin of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, he said how like the game has gotten crazy fast and everything. But again, going back to what I said before, if a game doesn't evolve... How is it going to stay relevant? You know, let's even take, I don't know, something like Force of Will that's like dead. Like that couldn't even get up off the ground. You know, imagine if Yu-Gi-Oh was still a game of, hey, I'm going to summon a monster and set two cards face down and end my turn. Like, yeah, that's simple Yu-Gi-Oh. That's caveman Yu-Gi-Oh as we call it. And that is like what's called old school Yu-Gi-Oh as we call it now. But the new modern game is like, hey, I'm going to build my board, so to speak. I'm going to drop a dookie on the board. I'm going to build my castle. Can you break through my defenses of my castle and beat me? And if you can, am I going to beat through your castle and build up my big monsters and my defenses? That's really what Yu-Gi-Oh has become now. And there are arguments and pros and cons to both the old school and the modern game. That's why a lot of people do like retro formats and things where you can go and play older formats and get a hang of the game. But if you want to learn the game as it is now, honestly, the biggest thing I suggest for new people coming into the game is to learn speed duels because that is a condensed version of the game. You have 20 cards in your deck, 2000 life points. The game is simplified. You have a limited card pool and you can slowly learn from there and then go into the main what I'm going to call full-fledged Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, someone had commented on Ackman's video saying there's no way to really step people in. And I think Ackman said the same thing in his video. But you have speed duels. I know that that's kind of a cop-out because you have to invest in that. But there are starter decks in speed duel that teach you the game. Hell, pick up like a starter deck link strike and learn link monsters. Learn all these things. Take the time to study it if you really want to get back into the game. If you just want to, you know, come out and play your beaver warrior with your horn of the unicorn, you're not going to have a good time. And I'm sorry that you won't. But I highly encourage people, especially if you just got done watching Ackman's video, take the time, open the rule book, watch some videos on YouTube, learn to play and see if you like it. And if not, go back to playing old school. There's nothing wrong with that. So guys, I hope that I made some good points in this video. Again, the video that Ackman put together is great. I just, I wanted to offer that other side of the coin that I feel Ackman didn't really scratch on enough in the video. I feel like he just took big names in the community, damned if he did, damned if he didn't, to try and, I don't know, get information when that information may not necessarily be the best. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.